As Congress realizes that a one-time payment of $1,200 wasn't enough to keep average Americans afloat during a global pandemic, the House recently passed another set of stimulus payments that did the same thing. I mean, most people that understand the basics of math could have told you that one payment of $1,200 wasn't going to help people when a juicer marketed to insomniacs goes for three easy payments of $39.99. I mean, that's basically like a small scale version of universal basic income, right? Which has been working for inf infomercials. So like a full scale version of it will probably work pretty well for, I don't know, like humans. Look, in the midst of the government bungling their way through this crisis and guaranteeing a financial crisis by handing out trillions of dollars to the banking industry and slapping corporations committing fraud on the wrist, the working class have decided to fight back. According to Payday Report, a website dedicated to tracking strikes and actions during the pandemic all over this country, there are over two 120 wildcat strikes happening right now across America. Virtually none of these strikes have been covered by the corporate media. But, you know, they have to cover how Nancy Pelosi throws shade at Donald Trump and how Donald Trump throws shade right back at her. Okay, this level of political theater just proves that the leaders of both parties are just auditioning for their own reality TV show to premiere in the fall. These aren't leaders, they are the human embodiment of vapid egos that most people leave behind at high school graduations to pursue a life of meaning and worth. There's no leadership in this country, it's just pettiness written into legislation. But that bleakness aside, there are rays of hopes in, in, in these strikes, in the, it's the strikes occurring all over the country. Right After a month of them, you can see how these large corporations and members of the oligarchy are pushing back on them. Earlier in May, New Orleans sanitation workers went on strike demanding hazard pay and paid sick leave. <clears throat> in March, the sanitation workers in Pittsburgh did the same thing, and it included that the city should provide them with masks and gloves to ensure their safety. Now, Democratic mayor of Pittsburgh said that the masks would be dangerous. Really, the only thing that's dangerous is a major lack of testing and treatment that we've seen and a lack of leadership choosing profit over the lives of people. In New Orleans, a city where you can drink booze on the streets, they took it one step further. The striking sanitation workers were fired and then they replaced them with prisoners from a nearby parish. These prisoners are paid a fraction of what the sanitation workers are actually paid, which is basically the city of New Orleans saying, hey guys, uh, we're gonna go ahead and keep y'all drunk so you don't notice that uh, we're, we're bringing slavery back into the fold. Now, is this what they mean by the South will rise again? Honestly, I just thought it was like a marketing strategy by Viagra gone horribly wrong. But here we are looking at prison slavery, making a comeback that nobody fucking asked for. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, as strike leader Gregory Woods put it, they are trying to show the world that people will still do our job without giving us the proper protective equipment. All of it's a hustle for them, a scam for them. They're saving money. That's all they're doing. That's all it is. This is a city that's saying essential workers, the people that Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats called heroes in our society, are going to be pushed aside and replaced by actual slavery. Eventually, there will be a hashtag on Twitter started by the oligarchy that says, hashtag slavery is essential. Since hashtag die for capitalism failed so miserably, why not try this one? The usual propaganda pushed against striking workers is that they're lazy and just don't want to do their jobs. This is simply not true. These sanitation workers in Pittsburgh and New Orleans didn't come out and say, we're done picking up after your half-eaten Pop-Tarts, cum-filled tissues, broken vibrators, and busted Predator 2 DVDs. 
We want, we want, we demand that you provide us protection, and that protection must come in the form of the the armor that Tony Stark had in the cinema Iron Man 2. Look, they'd like to keep doing their jobs and keep their cities clean, but they want to do it in a manner that ensures their safety. New Orleans' response just shows how the city's leadership shows a, a lack of concern for human life, much like the Pittsburgh's leadership. And sanitation isn't the only concern. Hospital workers from custodial to cafeteria staff are getting fed up with the treatment they're getting. At the University of Washington Medical Center, workers delivered a petition about enhancing safety in the workplace. With over 450 signatures from fellow employees and union support, they said that they wanted to shut down their cafeteria after an employee was tested positive for SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19. The cafeteria was not closed, but it was sanitized and masks were made necessary. Plexiglass was not installed because the hospital said, well, the masks were enough, which is basically the equivalent of a fuckboy saying that he put a condom over the tip and that was enough. In both cases, there's a very good chance of unnecessary fluids on a countertop. And of course, Amazon, the first sociopathic love child of one Jeffrey Bezos, has decided to end hazard pay for all of their frontline workers and offer them a t-shirt instead. Yeah, yeah, the t-shirt reads, thank you on the front and on the back, we deliver together. And that is an accurate t-shirt because they are going to deliver these workers a full case of the virus that causes COVID-19. Christmas comes early, baby, and it's guaranteeing no health care or paid time off. Bonus, you get to make Jeff Bezos even richer. Bezos also ended unlimited paid time off that he was offering employees at the end of April. He figured out that the, that the word unlimited did not, did not have a different meaning for the working class as it did for him. Now, Jeff Bezos and his deprived, depraved child company, Amazon, have seen the most amount of strikes coming from their employees because they aren't offering protections, better wages or work conditions. They've had employees that have contracted the virus and gotten the illness COVID-19, but the corporation refuses to do anything about it and blames the workers instead. In fact, Jeff Bezos was in the room when the decision to fire strike leader Christian Smalls was made. Amazon says it was for safety concerns, which is hilarious because that's the reason for the strike. So no matter how they spin it, they fired Christian Smalls for striking. After this, Lex Luthor, famed Superman villain, said, what an asshole that Bezos is. This is coming off the heels that Jeff Bezos is on his way to become America's first trillionaire as he's made an additional 30 billion during this pandemic alone. Most of us are living in uncertainty, but the one thing we can be certain about is that the billionaires are getting richer. Collectively, American billionaires in the last 30 years have increased their wealth by 1100% from 240 billion to 2.95 trillion dollars. That's trillion with a T. I'll go ahead and kind of give you a second to, to, to put all of the air back into your lungs. And in that time, they've decreased their tax obligations by 79%. And in that same time frame, the average American worker has increased their income by less than 5%. In the midst of an expanding income divide, the average working class can't seem to keep from fighting each other. As the number of strikes from essential workers increase, we are seeing some states open back up. Small businesses are making adjustments, but their fellow citizens are not making it easy. For an ice cream shop in Cape Cod that was taking orders an hour in advance of pickup, customers levied insults, rage, and were not following protocols. This resulted in a teenager that was working at a shop to quit. There's also reports of shootings in family dollars over masks and at McDonald's. 
Now, it may surprise most of you, uh, but the McDonald's shooting were not about the fact that uh, it's not real food uh, or the horrific nature of clowns. Just that there are people who choose to misguidedly ex exercise their Second Amendment rights in demand for better customer service. Look, the bottom line is, if this is the way we treat our fellow working class brothers and sisters, why would the oligarchs want to treat them any better? Why would the oligarchs, who, who have become 1,100 times richer, feel the need to change when we are willing to treat each other so terribly? Why would the oligarchs listen to the demands of the strikers when we are willing to cross picket lines again and again and again for something that's not even real food? I don't care if it comes with a toy, it's still bullshit. And we should be doing better by each other, especially now. Look, times are tough, but they're tough for everybody. And by not realizing that, we make it tougher on each other. And then Jeff Bezos and his billionaire cohorts get to mock us with a fucking t-shirt. Look, what we need now is not a redux on slavery or a trillionaire. We don't need platitudes from our leaders. We need a lot less Amazon Prime members and more solidarity for our frontline brothers and sisters. We need a better understanding of how math actually works, not how the market wants it to work. We're going to need a three easy payments of locking up Jeff Bezos and his billionaire cohorts and a lifetime supply of Medicare for All and UBI. Uh, I am super excited because I am going to be uh, doing some virtual live stand-up comedy shows. Uh, these, these shows that I'm calling the Citizen Revolution Comedy Shows uh, are, are through Zoom. You purchase a ticket, you get a confirmation an hour before to that same email via the ticketing site. I will send you an email one hour before the show, uh, all of the information, the link, the code, the, the, the password to get into the virtual showroom, and then at 9 p.m. Eastern, every single Friday, we are going to be doing the Citizen Revolution Comedy Show. Very excited to be doing them. The next one is May 22nd. If you can't make it to the May 22nd, fear not. I'm doing them every single Friday in June, so June 5th, June 12th, June 19th, June 26th, uh, I'm going to be doing the Citizen Revolution show. Tickets are only five bucks. And for the June 5th show, you can actually purchase tickets for all of the shows in June for a discounted price. So if you if you don't want to think about it, you're like, hey, I, Chris, I, I just want to get a ticket and just, and and boom, I'm, I'm ready to attend all of these shows. You can do so by, uh, by, by purchasing uh, that option for the June 5th show. Go to my website, krishmohan.com, K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N, and grab your tickets right now. Uh, like I said, they're a $5 minimum. Uh, sustaining members get them for free. And uh, if you are going through a financially difficult time, and if you would, and, and you still want to attend the show, no problem. Please message me on the back end, uh, and I, I will be very happy to give you a code so you can join in. And, uh, and, and enjoy a Friday evening, uh, much like you would a Friday evening if, if you were going out to the weird underground uh, listening room basement -y venue that I perform at on a regular basis. Uh, and these are, these are the closest thing to uh, live performances that I'm going to be doing throughout, the, um, throughout this, this quarantine time of ours. Uh, and uh, since all of my tour dates have essentially been canceled or all of the Fringe Festivals that I am participating in this year are all going virtual, uh, this means that this is how I'm primarily going to be able to earn my living. So uh, if you've ever come to see me perform live, if you've ever wanted to come see me perform live, if you're a regular listener to this podcast and you said, I've never come to see Krish live, this, this, this year was going to be it. 2020 was the year that I was going to come see Krish Mohan live. Uh, then, then this is your opportunity to grab a ticket and uh, come hang out with me. The second piece of news is that I'm going to be releasing my brand new stand-up comedy album, Politely Angry, that toured around this country for, uh, for about a year um, on June 1st, and you can exclusively pre-order it on Bandcamp. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. 
pre-order the album for just one dollar for just a singular buck you can pre-order the album right now and on june 1st boom it arrives in your inbox and you get to enjoy a brand new stand-up comedy album from me uh, i toured this around the country i lost my official album recording date so i switched over to plan b and used the recordings from three different shows that i did in 2020 uh, to, to put this album together, to engineer it myself and self-release it, uh, as I self-release all of my albums. <laughs> uh, so, uh, once again, go to uh, my band camp, which is ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. And as always, if you, if you have the ability to, and if you would like to, uh, you can become a sustaining member uh, on my website. You can go to uh, krishmohan.com. Uh, you can join my Patreon. You can uh, become a sustaining member directly on the website itself. You can make a one-time donation via PayPal or Cash App or Venmo or uh, however however you feel comfortable uh, making making those donations. In fact, you can also become a sustaining member through the Bandcamp, which gives you the option of getting uh, unreleased um, unreleased stand-up comedy content. Uh, every single month, there's already a backlog that y you would you would be privy to if that is if that is your fancy if that's what you that's what you would like. Once again, all of this stuff is available on my website, which is krishmohan.com. Uh, 